All right, everyone. Welcome once again. It is Friday, and you know what that means. And no, it's not the weekend. It is Manufacturing E-Commerce Success, and we're off again. I'm Damon Pastalka, one of your co-hosts. That pretty gentleman right over there is Kurt Anderson. He is going to take it away from here. We've got a great guest today. We're going to be talking about engineering your manufacturing website for your buyer. Take it away, Mr. Anderson. Damon, dude, are you now? I know you didn't get much sleep last night, right? Are you okay today? I am you're, good. You're up. You're up listening to Taylor Swift all night. I know for a fact, right? I couldn't believe it. I could. How, One you, came out, and then more, and then more, dude. Are you feeling? I'm. I'm throwing. I'm. I'm going. I'm going live. Are you feeling swift delicious or what? Are you, how are you feeling? I'm getting there. Are I'm you getting, getting there? there? All right. Well, I hope. You know, that album has nothing on this guest that we have today. So, whoa, whoa. Oh, man, how about that for a little warm up? So, hey, Ooh. Pauly Kishé, how are you, my friend? What's going on, dude? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. I love being on the show. Uh, we love having you here. Hey, drop us a note. Let us know you're out there. We've got a couple friends already, Damon. Hey, we've got Diane Byers in the house here. So, Diane is here. Happy Friday, Diane. We've got, uh, I'll her up. we've got, hey, Happy Friday. We've got Whitney Houston's in the Whitney's house. I'm here. at the gym yeah. this morning, Damon. I'm at the gym like at five this morning. Who popped on? Whitney Houston. So, Whitney, I was thinking of you. I was hoping that you'd be here today. And yes, Swift Delicious, Diane. Damon is Swift Delicious today. He's feeling it. Can he just, he just, he just looks, he's got the goal. Polly, let's dive in. You are a repeat offender. We just, dear friend of ours. We love having you on the show. You're just doing, spreading all sorts of just wonderfulness for manufacturers. But you know what? It's been a little while. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a hot minute since you've been on the show. Is that correct? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a little while. I don't think I don't feel I asked you this before, but if I did, I don't care. I'm going to ask you again. Yeah. When you're all right, you're Jersey guy through and through. When you're a little guy growing up, little guy growing up, who was your hero? Who was oh, your wow. hero when you were a little guy growing up? I don't know. Uh, good question. Um, I wasn't one for your traditional heroes. Um, you know, I had I had an older brother that I probably looked up to a lot, and I had uh, a great dad that I looked up to a lot. So I, I think I'm more of that realistic uh, notion. Yeah. You know, family first, probably. That's oh, and I have an uncle that was just like this incredible story. My I have an uncle that. Um, that ended up creating a bird farm out in Washington. Uh, he he was an engineer for Boeing and created the the most like the most world renowned bird farm out in Washington. Became like world known for it and stuff like that. So he was he was quite a hero himself there too. A bird farm is that what you're saying? Yeah. So he, yeah, it was a crazy story. He would fly from country to country all around the world because he was working with Boeing as an engineer. Yeah. Training other countries how to use the Boeing planes. And he would pick up birds all over the world. So he had birds from like Antarctica, all over the world. And he would um, have them in Washington and the state would donate land to him and have Boy Scouts and everybody would like take care of his property because he was such a, such a such a big phenomenon out there. Yeah, just a, wow. an incredible story. Yeah. I want to write a book about him someday. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. What a great story, man. We, I, so where I live, there's like a big bird, you know, sanctuary thing. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that offline, but what's your, yeah. uncle's, what's your uncle's name? Uh, well, he, he's passed already, but his name, I was named, uh, not necessarily after him, but we, we share the same name. So it was Paul as well. So awesome. Right. What a great story. Yeah. Yeah. What a life that guy led flying yeah. all over the world. It's, it's it goes Pretty way beyond that. Birds. Yeah. And then started a bird farm. How yeah. cool is Super that? Cool. Mm -hmm. And is is that place is it still in existence? It is. His uh his wife that uh he left behind, uh she she takes care of it with her husband and stuff like that. So yeah. Oh, absolutely. how cool is that? Yeah. All right. And then one more question, Damon. We don't get many siblings on the show. The first person that came to mind was Big Brother. Just share a little bit. Why was Big Brother uh, a hero to you? Uh, I think it's just one of those classic things you know like uh he, he first off he's 10 years older than me i have a sister that's 11 years older too she was definitely a hero to me as well yeah. and i have another sister that's seven years older so i came from a big family but like when they're that much older they they're practically like your uncle almost or something like that so they yeah. you look up to them a lot you know 
Um, but just, you know, they, they led some really exciting lives. Um, my brother, for example, he's a uh, actor, writer, producer, director. He's been in stuff all, all over the place. He was in Breaking Bad and a lot of other big wow. and stuff. So, yeah, just the, he lives an exciting life as well. Yeah. Wow. Well, those, those handsome jeans run in the, in the cliche <laughs> yep. family, man. Just so you know, it's hard being on stage with you, Paul. Damon, we've got a number of friends <laughs> oh, here. Oh, we do. Wow. Let's, let's get, let's get some. Whitney. Wouldn't it? Well, you never know, do you, Whitney? Can't judge a book by its cover. Damon is indeed a Swifty. He, Dan, a, out there in a car somewhere. The technology is incredible. Out in West Virginia. All right. Yeah, we got Gary in the house today. Hey, Gary, hey, what's happening today? Manchester, happy Friday to you. We got Harry Flores in the crowd today. There we go. Harry. Ooh, look, this is a big deal. Dan's daughter is driving. Wow, Dan. Wow. Wow. Boy, good luck, Dad. And hey, yeah. I want to give a thank you to Harry. Dropped a great comment on LinkedIn this morning. Yeah, Harry, what a great story that was. We got to get Harry on the show. So, yeah, Harry, thank do. you guys. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Keep the comments coming. We've got Paul Kishay here today. We are going to do a deep dive into how to really maximize your website, and we have the authority here in the house to dive into this. So, Paul, been on the show before. We did a fun jam session last year, and. Yeah. Boy, people are blown away. We're doing some before and afters where when you were on the show last uh, last time, we were doing some before and afters. But before we get there, give a little background into yourself. So why, you know, you're a creative guy, you're a professor, you're an artist. Why manufacturing? How did you evolve your firm to really target and help manufacturers? Well, that's a good question. I So I've had my business for over 18 years. and. Nice. I've been working in the industry since 1998 or so. Uh, I've been doing actually websites since 1998. So at the very dawn of the internet and so forth. And um, my company, AVA Creative, uh, we were probably, I don't know, 10 years into business and everybody everybody kept saying, you got to niche down, you got to specialize. And when we finally took that advice, we looked at our clientele and I'd say the majority was in manufacturing. So we had already been so experienced and um, and had such a portfolio of manufacturers for such a long time. It was a natural move for us. So uh, we actually specialize in manufacturing and technology, which we find go hand in hand. Uh, and it's just we've embraced it, dove right in um, and just started to uh, what we did. What I like what we did is we didn't just assume we understand uh, all manufacturers problems. What we did was we started interviewing them. Uh, writing articles about it, uh, diving deep in. We joined a lot of organizations and learned a lot. So uh, what was fascinating was is that manufacturers didn't care about all the things that we thought maybe they did. And uh, they had different problems than other companies do. And, you know, we tried to learn a lot about that and try to cater to that a little bit more. Well, I love that. 1998, dude, that, boy, yeah. time flies when you're having fun, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, and what I encourage everybody to do, check out Aviate Creative. It is a fantastic website. Yeah. And so, Damon, we talk a lot about, you know, sometimes as solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, consultants, you know, we become the cobbler's kids with no yeah. shoes, if you will. Uh, Paul has a fantastic website, all sorts of information, white papers, check out uh, what he's got going on. Tons of information to help manufacturers really to uh, better themselves, better their website, stop being the best kept secret. Paul, let's go here for folks that are new, curious minds would love to know, how does your team at Aviate Creative, how do you make the world a better place? Let's dive into some of the menu items that you guys, how you make manufacturers better. Sure. You mean in terms of services and stuff like that? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saving the world with this, but. <laughs> sure you are. You're being humble, my friend. That's fun. Um, so, uh, we're a branding company. Uh, we have a couple of key areas. So, uh, we do a lot of work in branding from anything from positioning through logos to naming a company to the full branding, you know, vision. Uh, and that dives further into websites. So we do tons of websites, which we're going to talk about mostly today, anything from an email all the way through giant e-commerce sites. We've even built social media platforms and all sorts of stuff before. Um, and then, uh, we do a lot of print. So a lot of a lot of agencies have like run away from print, but we still embrace it. So we do a lot of catalogs, a lot of direct mail and promotions and all sorts of flyers and case studies and all sorts of stuff there. Uh, we're writers, we're designers. So we do a whole breadth of work all the way through, help with trade shows and vehicle wraps, uh, a wide variety of anything design, anything writing, that kind of stuff. 
Well, I love that. And a few things to take away here. And I'd like to back up one minute, your entrepreneurial journey. Mm-hmm. What what encouraged you? Was yeah. there an aha moment? Was there an event? What what launched your entrepreneurial journey? Probably um probably determination and anger. <laughs> determination <laughs> and anger, dude. All right. So, Curious you know, if, I'm, if I'm fully honest, right? Like uh yeah. I was very um I have a interesting story and stuff and I was very, very ambitious. So um, like just to give you an understanding of that, uh, I got my first job when I was a freshman in college. By the time I was a junior in college, I was already a, um, a senior designer and I was already published 30 times as an illustrator. Wow. By the time I was, gra- by the time I graduated college, I was already a creative director running an art department for a PR firm in New York. And I was already uh, massively published in publications. Nice. And then I started running um, other divisions and stuff. So I ended up, uh, after 9-11, uh, I ended up having to leave New York and back in New Jersey. I worked for an agency for a couple of years. And they had a uh, creative director um, that was fine. Uh, but that they ended up letting go of that creative director. And I said to them, if you hire, you know, I asked. Basically, I said, uh, you know, I like the job. And they said, you're too young. You don't know what you're doing yet. And I was like, okay. Um, And I said, well, if you hire somebody, I want to either learn from them or they should be better than me or I want to learn from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they hired them. They were terrible. And uh, they fired them. So I said again to them, like, all right, I'm, you know, hoping to get the job now. Um, And I said, if you hire somebody else, that's not right. I'm going to leave. So uh, they hired somebody else that was bad again. Uh, so I made the move and I started my own business. I mean, I, it, I had already been freelancing for many years. So I was already basically like set as a company. I already had clients. I already had lots of stuff. Um, but I, I wanted to, uh, work there. So, um, it was kind of fun. And then within like a year, that company was already like upset that I was getting more clients than they were and everything else. So it was, uh, pretty interesting start to the whole journey, you know? Well, what's fascinating, Damon, you know, we've talked a lot about, we love asking that story. Like, Hey, you know, what's the, what's the origin story? You know, like how did you start your entrepreneurial journey? We hear a lot of accidental entrepreneurs, Damon, this might be the first of the angry. (laughs) Determination and anger. We got that. So, Hey, David, I I I think that that there's probably more stories like that, that people probably are just (laughs) embarrassed to share. You know, I mean, ultimately uh, it was probably, you know, this, this drive that I was like, I don't want to have a ceiling over my head type of thing, but it was also like, okay, you're going to tell me I can't be, you know, more successful. I'll I'll show you. you Yeah. 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 Well, thanks. Shub stopped in, dropped a comment. Thanks for that. Dan says, well, he was graduating college in 98. And then the other thing Dan said, that's funny, graduating college. And then uh, seen a bunch of this on your post. So if anyone wants to learn more about Paul, that's a great thing. Go back and take take a look at it. Look at his website. Great work. Just incredible work. And then Whitney, determination and anger. It's a fire <laughs> going there, going there. And I'm going to say thanks to Matthew Hollingsworth for being here today. Um, stopping by. Thank you, and Matthew. Dan says something we all know. There's a lot of people leaving corporate America and starting their own companies. It's a, yeah. it's a different world for us. So yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Thanks everyone. a long time ago for me though. You know, a lot of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I think about that. And I mean, and uh, Kurt's a little different. He left his own company to do this. But you know, I think about when leaving corporate America and, and, you know, it was it was out of frustration for me, you know, and I feel what you're saying. You just there's something better. Don't know what it is, but there is something better. So yeah. that's cool. I think uh, I think if people are honest with themselves, frustration is a big key factor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Was so for being with anger and determination, you know, was there any nervousness? Was it all excitement? Was it just pure determination? Like you I remember had those such emotions? a big ego back then. I, I still have a big ego, but I had I was not nervous at all. I thought I could conquer the world back then, yeah. you know. I love so nice. I I've learned a lot of lessons and I've been humbled a lot since then. But back then I, I had yeah. a huge ego. Yeah. Time keeps us keeps us humble. So again, guys, we're here with Paul. Drop a note in the chat box. Bring your questions. 
He's a branding guru. We're going to show some before and example, uh, before and after examples with websites. I saw you just put up a great example on LinkedIn. I think maybe yesterday or the past couple of days, Paul. Um, let's dive in. Let's let's start going there on some branding things with manufacturers, website, that yeah. type of thing. What I want to start here. What are some? Are there some common traits that you see with manufacturers that kind of make your your make you cringe a little bit. You're like, boy, I wish manufacturers could get out of this pattern. What are some of the the bad habits that you see that that are common that you like to correct? That- yeah, I mean, we're specifically for the websites you're kind of hitting that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in general, uh a lot of manufacturers um are they've been around for a long time at some point or another in the beginning or some point they might have cared about uh, they're marketing more and they're branding more. And then all of a sudden they just kind of, or not all of a sudden over time, mm-hmm. they just kind of let it go. Uh, it became outdated, irrelevant. Um, and I think that's very dangerous. So you have manufacturers that are still selling stuff that's super relevant for today, right? Like I'll talk to manufacturers and they're like, Oh, this will be on a spaceship or this will be yeah. on a, you know, in a computer and all this like modern stuff. And yet they're uh, often their branding and their website is so dated that it looks like it's from the seventies. Yeah. And I'm like, that doesn't add up. Right. So if mm-hmm. someone's going to your site, they're qualifying you, they're deciding whether or not they want to work with you. And if, if they're going, they're going to also look at your competitors. So if they look at you and that your competitors and you look like you're a dying company, that's going to potentially, you know, fall apart tomorrow or that you're irrelevant. Um, they're going to move on, you know? So that's yeah. a big one right there is just, the outdated look of it, right? Um, and I think a lot of them are, uh, which makes perfect sense, they're run by engineers. Um, some of them are actually run by accountants and stuff like that, right? Where they're like business people first and they don't necessarily think about the marketing end of things. So um, often uh, the engineer might put uh, the specifications and the materials and the, and the, the equipment on their website first. And I'm like, that's not actually what your buyers care about, right? Your buyers might care about solving their problem. Their buyers yeah. might care about the problems that they've had in the past and that, you know, their pain points and concerns. So addressing the right kind of content um, makes a lot of sense. So those are, I guess, two big ones that I would that I would point to right off the bat. Yeah. yeah. I love it. And so, and Damon, we just had a conversation with a guest on Monday. They were saying how uh, they did a big research project and it was Wendy Covey. Yeah. 66%. And this was uh, their interviewing engineers. And the 66% of the buyer's journey is done online. So, you know, Paul, as you say, you know, like you've got one chance to make that great first yeah. impression, right? Yeah. Not only that, but probably within one to three seconds. One to three. Exactly. You, you got know? no time. Somebody literally. comes onto your site they glance at it and they might flip right off the bat. Right. So like yeah. right off the bat, you have, it's called what, what's it called above the fold. You guys are web guys. So, yep. you know, but what above the fold means above the scroll, right. It comes from yep. like those old newspaper days. So basically uh, before they even scroll, you need to know that you're in the right place, that they're legit, that they're quality, that they're professional, you know, that kind of stuff, what they do. Just, I can't believe how many sites I come to that, that might even look nice. But then you get there and you're like, what do you do? Like, yeah. I read that description six times and I still don't know what the hell this company does, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'll talk to them and be like, yeah, we don't really know what it means either. Some writer <laughs> wrote it for us. And I'm like, okay, well, that's the first thing we need to fix. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And, and I love, you know, over your career, if you go uh, connect with Paul on LinkedIn, do yourself a favor, puts out great yeah. content, a lot of valuable posts. And I, some of the companies I had down, you've worked with Disney, Kraft, the street.com, Lenovo. Uh, you gave a great example we'll talk about with uh, Hayden with like a mm-hmm. client that you just did some before and afters with how you, and you work with everything in between how mm-hmm. what types of clients you know like manufacturers what are like those ideal clients that you love working with that you see the the best results with I mean honestly it's it's I don't know if people like this answer but um it's the full spectrum. Like uh, we we work with individuals that are one person companies. Yep. And then we work all the way up to like Lenovo, who's like one of the top 100 companies yeah. in the world. Yep. Yep. So, and the funny thing is, is that it always comes down to who values what we do and, and the results we get. Because I might work with somebody in a huge company and they might not value me. And they might just be, they might be trying to get every little cent out of it and, 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 try to knock down the price and everything else. And then you work with an individual and they're like, no problem. I totally get it. That makes sense. You know, 
So size doesn't matter. Um, ten, we tend to work with companies that have one person to five people marketing teams, but honestly, that doesn't matter either. We work with companies that don't have any marketing. We work with companies that have huge marketing departments. So that doesn't seem to make much difference to us either. Um, but in general, they need to have a budget for it, right? Um, yeah. Not only for the site, but they also need to have a budget to to promote and market their stuff. So like one of my favorite things to say is like a company might come to us uh, for an e-commerce site and I don't know, maybe they have this huge site, right? So say that I'm not, I'm not going to say all our sites are this expensive, but maybe this, this site's just a huge site. It's like 50 grand or something, right? Mm -hmm. They have this big site and I'll say to them, do you have $50,000 now to promote it as well? Do you have 50,000 to market it? Because if you are creating a $50,000 site, but then you just let it sit there and you don't actually tell anybody about it it's yep. going to just fail anyway. Right? right. So like, it's, it's not just about that. So it has to be somebody that understands that marketing and understands that there's value in that and that it's going to work. Um, I'll tell you, uh, what I'll qualify right now is if someone gets on and I have to like argue with them about the value of marketing, I'm like, if I have to argue with you that, right, that right. This is, there's even value to this, then I'm wasting my right. time because, right. yeah. you know, uh, what are we even doing on this call kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but it's, it's interesting. It's also about what they value. So what one, you remember earlier in the conversation, I said that we learned a lot about what manufacturers actually care about. Mm -hmm. And what fascinated me was we, we automatically assumed that most of them needed to generate leads. And a lot of them do want to generate leads and generate sales. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I actually found that a lot of them were like, no, I'm plenty busy. I don't need more sales right now. What I need is employees. I was like, okay. And I realized over time that that website is just as important for yeah. generating uh, recruitment and uh, attracting employees as it is for getting those sales and leads. 100%. So there's, it depends on the goals of that company and what they're trying to do. Some of them, yeah. all they want to do is appeal to the stockholders, you know, and that's a whole different thing too. So yeah. it all depends on what it is. Um, but ultimately, like I said, you only have a couple seconds for someone to qualify you. And then after that, you want to build that trust and reliability or credibility and, and make sure that they understand your, you know, the details of your products and all that stuff, which we can dive into that deeper as well. Yeah. Yeah. We got some comments here. I'm going to hit real quick. Cause Dan, Dan always great comments. So you're saying manufacturing are using cave drawings to market themselves. <laughs> and he says, sounds about right. And then he follows up with another one and says, and I can't read cave drawings. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, Matthew says, you know, I see typically see a big gap in marketing manufacturers or revenue up to 50 million and beyond. And I, I think that's totally right. And then this is real poignant, too, is that many don't even see from Matthew again. Many don't even see the need for a marketing budget. Very true. And thankfully, though, I think people are getting more used to marketing just because it it, it is. It, it, I mean, I don't know what company. I don't know. I don't know who can be successful anymore long term without having. Marketing. It's wild to me how many companies seem to operate with no marketing. It blows my mind. But the funniest thing to me is like when I'll get a company for a catalog or for a website and I'll give them a price, whatever. And uh, they're like, well, we only have a budget of like whatever, like a couple thousand dollars. And I'm like, how much money are you going to earn from this website or from this catalog? Right. Yeah. Are you going to earn? $100,000, $200,000. Are you going to earn a million, 2 million, 10 million? And they'll be like, oh, we expect to at least earn 10 million from this catalog. Mm -hmm. And yet you only want to spend you know, yeah, yeah. $500 or $2,000. Like dollars for that like, 10 million. Don't you like yep. take the second to do the math there of, you yeah. know, that it might be worth more to you to do it right to sell $10 million worth of product, you know? Um, you guys deal with e-commerce all the time. I mean, the amount of product that goes through those sites, uh, there's value there, you know? Oh, yeah. And I'm amazed. Some, Like I said, some really small companies, five people companies, whatever, they'll understand it. They'll be like, oh man, I'll pour money into this because I'm getting X out of it. Yeah. And then you get huge companies that somehow just don't see it. Uh, and they, yeah. uh, they're, they're counting every dime, you know? That kind of yep. Thing. Yep. And that's, yeah. you, you bring up an awesome thing and I'm not going to diverge on this much, but, the, the state of marketing now is is such that 
understanding your attribution in your marketing is so important for the owners. You know, you can see a website, you can see before and after, you can see, you know, using ads before and after, you can see print advertising that you guys do and the before and after of that. Mm -hmm. It's it's really interesting that people don't understand how, how this all has to work together um, with as much as there is out there explaining and talking about it. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, not to get too far into that direction, but there's there's like um, putting a value on on that perception and on the uh, how you um, create that impression. That's very difficult to do, right? So for a while, I would say, I would say it started in the early two thousands up till now. Uh, some companies went so deep into data, they went the opposite direction where they were like, "We need proof. We need data." Right. that they actually started neglecting some of the things that don't provide data, but that still mm -hmm. provide a result. So there's like a balance there, right? Where it's like, they need to understand that there's a value there. And I like how you use the word attribution, I think it was where, you know, you need to know where those leads are coming in from and why they're coming in. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean like what happened is a lot of companies started to just, just put money into SEO or just put money into AdWords because that was the only thing that could provide that data. And I'm like, but that's only one part of the story, you know? And, to set to be able to put a number towards a logo or a website is a very challenging thing because there's so much that it impacts. You're never going to know, and it's it's part of a bigger puzzle, you know. So it, yeah. it doesn't. It's not just a one piece thing that you can attribute all of your success to, you know. So, exactly. Um, but it's that's it's a tough thing to convince people of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. We got some more great comments here, Whitney. First of all, love that you brought up the digital presence for recruitment. That is huge. It is huge across the board in companies now, manufacturing and other companies. Mm -hmm. It's that is such a big thing is because people want to be able to see who they would, where they would be going to work, who the people are there. There's just so many simple things that companies can do to really help their recruitment by doing that. And then, and then Harry brought a, a great question to you. Um, beside needing redesigns, how often do you find manufacturing sites needing updates with SEO as well with keyword content, description titles, et cetera? Yeah. So, I mean, if we're talking about SEO and stuff, it really depends on the company. Um, so some companies that are more maybe commodity based or, um, or, selling more direct to consumer or direct to like a bigger audience, whatever SEO is, is huge. Uh, if you have a B2B company and they have a small amount of buyers and uh, you know, there, it takes a lot of education to get somebody to buy, or maybe people don't even know that it even exists. Then SEO is not that important because people don't even know what to search kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on what that is. Um, I would say that in general, most manufacturing sites that we touch, uh, SEO is a very, very uh, underutilized uh, thing in the sense that um, some of the ones that really know what they're doing, yeah, they're going to have SEO as part of their integrated plan. A lot of them just are so behind. Um, you know, I work with technology companies and manufacturing companies and technology companies, they're so advanced that you have to kind of take them back a little bit and be like, whoa, 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 your audience isn't quite there yet, right? But manufacturing companies are so behind yeah, yeah, sometimes you can only bring them up like three steps, but they still yeah. have seven more steps to go. Oh, yeah. um, so sometimes we're just like, listen, you got to start with the basics before you, you know, you run with the SEO and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in general, uh, SEO, it, it's it's great if you can integrate it in. When I don't like it is when you, um, if it's not essential for that company, some companies will sacrifice aesthetic and the sound and the the, re the reading of their site in order to have good SEO. And I think that's a mistake. I think you need to yeah. have good integrated SEO that still shows quality, reads as quality, that kind of stuff, yep. um, which a lot of people went way too far the wrong direction. And you look at these sites and you're like, this just looks like junk. You yep. know? Yeah. I was looking at one yesterday. Yeah. Hey, Whitney says mic drop moment right there, right? <laughs> mic drop moment. We did, Paul, I knew there were going to be tons of mic yeah. drops coming at us today. And, uh, and I'll grab this one here, Damon, you know, yeah. Crawl, walk, run. Whitney Houston, I couldn't agree with you more. And Diane says, yeah. that's the goal. Get U.S. manufacturing up to date. We cannot be left behind. 
Matthew uh, was in a session yesterday where a business had SEO expert designed their website. They were quickly the first company to come up, but the con uh, conversion did not change. The SEO was great, but the design colors, art, and storytelling was bad. And what's the point then, right? So yeah. now, now you're getting people to your site because SEO, but then they're not going to convert because they're not going to be convinced of anything. So yep. it's like yep. you, you, you can't just do that. It's uh, Unless you literally are the lowest price. Right? If you're the lowest price and you just want to get people in, that's and right. Show the lowest price. That's fine. But how many of these companies that we're talking to right now are lowest price? Probably none. Right. Yeah. Very. And if you are lowest price, you don't care about right. any of this stuff. Yep. Yeah. Whitney says the same thing. An old company just did excellent with SEO, but terrible in user experience. And it's you said this a few minutes ago, Paul. You got to consider the whole thing. Yeah. You got to consider where you're at. You got to consider that that the buyer, as we our title says today, you've got to build your website for your buyer, not for. SEO or you, it has to be for them. I mean, think about it. Someone coming in from search engine optimization, which means they Googled you, they're taking the time to find you. They come in and then all of a sudden they're confused. They don't know what you do. They can't find what they're looking for. Yep. They, you know, they're looking at it going, this looks like my, you know, nephew did it in college, you know, like just right. a terrible, bad experience. And it feels like just low quality. Now you're doing destruction to your company more than yeah. you're helping it, you know, right. and you're wasting money to do that. Uh, right. So it just doesn't make any sense to do that, you know. Yeah. Well, let's go here, Paul. So I love it. So again, if you're just joining us, if, I know we're over the top of the hour. We're here with Paul Kishay, the founder of Aviate Creative. Go to his website. And so, Paul, you have a great process. You met. You've talked about research. You're extremely thorough. And like in I, a lot of things that you've said, man. I, I've, if you're just joining us. Boy, go back and hit the replay because there's been a lot of gold that's been dropped, a lot of mic drop moments so far. But, Paul, let's take us through a little bit of the process of how do you win? I know you're big on research. You're going to go through, you know, you've got a process that you do. Let's dive into that a little bit. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about a couple different things that we do within that process. Um, yeah. So uh, I tell you what's shocking to me is how many companies that are in our, our industry that uh, don't communicate to their clients. So <laughs> number one, uh, good communication. So um, making sure that you're having face-to-face -face time, uh, even if it's Zoom or whatever, making sure that you're having good conversations, understanding their goals, understanding their market, their buyer, really diving deep into that and making sure that you're clear on that before you even get started. Um, and then <clears throat> here, let me show you, uh, I'll, I'll pull up a quick uh, little presentation of, uh, of our do. diagram. So that maybe you'll uh, walk people through it just for one minute. While you're grabbing that, Damon, I'm going to grab Harry's got a comment. Thank you, Paul, for the education. I yeah. love it. And uh, Matthew says, another small firm redesigned the site and conversion increased by four times. That's a, that, hey, that's a mic drop right there, right? Let's see. Got it. All right. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide, but can you see that? There we go. Yep. All right. So we, we talked a bit about, um, so we're not going to ask them lots of questions and stuff. Uh, we're going to have a kickoff meeting to make sure everybody's on the same page. We're going to do some research. Um, information architecture is our first phase. Now, what blows my mind, we've been doing information architecture since the early 2000s. And what blows my mind is how many companies have never even heard of it before and how we have to educate so many people on it. I'm not just talking about our clients. I'm talking about a lot of our competition don't even know what that means. Um, basically, <clears throat> to make it even a little simpler, it's a wireframe and a sitemap for your website. It's to kind of plan out the information. So um, one of the ways I like to describe it is like, uh, if you go to a um, you know construction company and say, build me a house, they're gonna go back to you and say, where's the blueprint? Get us the blueprint. Yeah. <laughs> and so the wireframe and the information architecture is like the blueprint to your house, right? So, or the blueprint to your website. So. You want to make sure that that's done correctly so that way it maps out all the content it sets up a hierarchy of information for what's the most important secondary tertiary it sets up how you cross reference and cross sell content uh, how you build trust credibility throughout the site so it maps out the content of that site um, after that we get into writing um, interviewing and designing uh, so we'll walk people through that uh, you're part of the journey when you're working on this project so you'll actually uh get to see designs as we go there's no big like reveal at the end it's you know it's it's as you kind of go through it so that way um you have the chance to kind of give us feedback and stuff as you go um we build our sites personal our company builds most of them in wordpress 
Uh, so we're going to build that to, to make sure it functions right. The last yeah. thing you want is a pretty site that just doesn't work. So yeah. we want to make sure that it's actually built properly. We test it uh, and then we launch it. Um, and when we test it, we want to make sure we test it multiple times on multiple browsers, multiple devices, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's a quick glance at our general process there. Let, awesome. Let's hit on a couple of things that I want to I want to touch on. So, you know, uh, great, you know, maybe something to exercise this weekend or, you know, next week as you're take, taking a look at your, you know, maybe we should all do it. You know, Damon, you and I included. Right. We should take a look at our websites and just, you know, can you look at it from an objective set of eyes? You know, maybe get a family member, your kids, your spouse your whoever, have them take a look at it. Paul made a great point. Not, you know, are your buyers looking at their desktop laptop? Are they uh, are majority of them on their cell phone? And I would encourage you don't assume, right? Yeah. Uh, on their desktop, man, I can't tell you how many clients they're at 50, 50, sometimes they're at 60%. Well, you can find out real fast, uh, right? So if you have your uh, site set up on analytics or yep. if you have your site set up on Google AdWords or anything like that, they do provide how yep. many people are coming in on mobile or desktop. And I know that for me, I always assume people are on desktop because that's how I work. And that's not the case at all, right? So it depends on a week, but we see typically 50 to 60% on, on uh, mobile devices of some sort or another, yep. you know, mostly phone, uh, sometimes tablet. So it's definitely tricky and you do need to make sure you're um, adhering to that because uh, if you're losing 60% of your business be or uh, audience because of the fact that they're on some kind of mobile device and you haven't even considered that, uh, that's a big mistake, you know. Right. Expect it at this stage. So, Paul, I'm gonna. I, I'd like to go here. I'm gonna be a little bit of Captain Obvious, and I know we've covered some of this, but I I'd like to take a little bit deeper dive. Understanding your buyer, okay? Mm -hmm. How important it is, and sometimes we get as as uh, you know for manufacturers or our own business. You know, I've been on calls where Damon, you know, we're notorious. You know, everybody has their their language, their lingo, their acronyms, right? Yeah. Hey, well, we're going to do uh, SEO, and you need to do PPC, and you need to do, you know, well, if you're a marketer, you might know those, but if you're a manufacturer, you're like, I don't know what SEO is. I don't yeah. know what PPC stands for. You know, so as as owners of our property, we want to make sure that we're speaking their language. Paul, how do you what, take us there? Walk us through a little bit. How do you help your clients to speak the buyer's language or how do you help them conquer those challenges? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, ultimately, uh, th they're doing the same thing, right, is what you're saying. So uh, they might be talking in their, in their engineering lingo. And honestly, yeah. it's more than that. It's like, a lot of people are talking in a language that's only in that company because they're so used <laughs> to talking about their products. And they're using acronyms that no one's ever heard of before. Yeah. Stuff. So understanding how your customer talks about it is important. I tell you the easiest way to do it is to ask, right? Like, and, and it, it, I know this sounds <laughs> difficult at first, but it's really simple, right? So what I recommend is trying to set up um, discussions with three to five key kinds of clients. And I'm the mistake I think a lot of people do is they'll just ask, the clients that love them, because that's the easy answer. But the clients that love you don't usually have the challenges and the concerns as much because they're already in mm -hmm. love with it. So I would ask them, but I would also ask maybe clients that are, feel like they're on their way out, mm -hmm. uh, like that are kind of unhappy and find out what they're doing, right? Uh, sometimes I'll ask prospects too, uh, companies that they're they're interested in working with that they might be talking to and finding out what they care about, right? So we'll ask them, you know, what are your pain points? What do you, you know, what do you care about? What don't you care about? What do you want? And they start using different language and they care about totally different stuff, right? Um, I've had, it's interesting. I've had these conversations for companies because we do positioning and interview these companies sometimes. And they'll say, you know, uh, we were thinking about leaving, but because you called us and because you care about our opinion, now, you know, we're going to reconsider wow. this and so forth. So it, it matters a lot to them of what you care about and what they care about is so different often than what you think. Right. Yep. So I've had whatever it is, maybe like a metal manufacturing company, so proud of their product. And then I call up the company and they're like, we don't care at all about the product. We care about Brian, the sales guy, cause he's the connection to us. And we care about the fact that you delivered on time. We care about the fact that, you know, we don't have a hassle and we have one place to pay this and one place to do whatever it is, right? Like yeah. all of a sudden you find out like their goals are totally different than what you thought. You thought it was all about the product. No, it had all to do with the customer service or whatever else it is, you know? So um, assuming you know what the buyer cares about is a big mistake. I think getting on a call with them and really understanding what they care about 
what matters yeah. to them and so forth. Like I said earlier, like maybe, you know, attracting uh, employees might be more important to my clients than selling products, whatever. So it all depends on what uh, that client cares about. So uh, that's the straight up easy answer is to ask them. And um, a lot of people are afraid to do that. But um, most people, I wouldn't say most, but if you reach out to whatever, 12 companies, you know, maybe uh, six of them will say yes, you know. So I think that it's not as hard as, as people think it's going to be. Um, and uh, and you don't even have to make it like official. You could just say, hey, I want to chat. Can we, can yeah. we go out for coffee? Can we do whatever? Um, don't scare them with like some, I'm going to interview you for an hour type right. of thing, you know, yeah. <laughs> keep it simple yeah. and easy. So well, uh, I guess that would be the biggest easy answer to that question, you know? Yeah. We got some great questions or great comments here, Diane, the assumption poison to the process. Mm. That's for sure. Um, and this is the other thing is sometimes internally we speak Martian compared to what the industry speaks. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt. Like I'm talking so much so that, you could just alienate your entire uh, customer base that way because right. you assume they know certain terminologies and they don't use those words at all. You know, like, uh, completely. You know, I love um, what you're saying, Paul. Real quick, I mean, just to interject super fast. I love what you're saying, and and you know, kind of, you know, when we're saying like, hey, to, to question the customer, not to, you know, hey, let's send out a survey. Nobody fills out a survey. No, 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 no. It has, to be like, a, it has to be a personal it's, conversation. It's yeah, making it a personal conversation and and really and asking that buyer, hey. What can we do to make your job better? What can we do to make you more successful? You're accomplishing the same thing with that with a survey type question, but you're you're showing that you have their back, you know. Yeah. And I just I I couldn't love your advice more. This is just a, a any of all the golden nuggets you've dropped today, which are plenty. That might be the biggest, right? Yeah. Nice one. And, get uh, and honestly, sometimes it's third party too. So sometimes they'll they'll prefer to talk to a mm. third party because they feel like. They don't, they might be more honest with the third party sometimes because they're afraid to be negative with their actual contact there and stuff. Right. Um, so that's part of it as well. But, uh, and then what I'll do sometimes is I'll actually include a salesperson on the call sometimes because all of a sudden sales opportunities open up because they're like, oh, I didn't know you did that. I didn't, you know, and oh, but we need that too. So I'll, I'll record it and provide that to sales teams or whatever else to make sure that um, they get those opportunities as well. So it's, it's an interesting sales opportunity uh, at the same time. Absolutely. So I, I want to be, I, dude, we could keep you here all day. I want to be mindful of time. A couple more questions I'd love to ask. I want to get into, and again, so I might be Captain Obvious, but boy, you did, that was just an awesome yeah. answer to a really simple question. And yep. you gave a really nice, concise easy response, right? Like, like communicate, let's talk with our customers. Let's dive into results. Okay. Obviously, you know, uh, sometimes as manufacturers, it's just, you know, it's kind of, uh, or, or as entrepreneurs, it's like, blah, 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 blah. We just want sales, right? Yeah. If you, so all we're hearing or thinking is that I'll close the sale, close the sale, but are we really getting intentional on the website? Are there any tips, any like golden nuggets that you could drop as far as like, you know, being intentional as a manufacturer, do we want a drawing? Are we trying to get a request for, you know, turn that request for quote? Do we want e-commerce? Can you talk a little bit about like goals and results for the website? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of different opportunities to sell on a website. Um, I, in general, I would say uh, don't be too salesy on the website, but also sell when appropriate. Uh, so one big mistake would be is that some people go too heavy on the sale part and you should be educating a little bit more beforehand. Mm -hmm. You should kind of, uh, be very informative, uh, be very easy to use and so forth. A lot of people want super simple access to things. So having good navigational opportunity to basically get exactly where you need to find things. Um, if they have to search for a while, that's going to hurt a lot of that. Uh, one thing a lot of companies don't do is cross reference or cross sell stuff. So if you're on a page talking about the process of the, the milling of this product, whatever, you can also cross sell certain products that help that process and so forth. So, um, or, you know, say you're selling safety products and you're selling goggles, you can sell, you know, whatever it is, the, the bands that go that connect behind the goggles and the, maybe, maybe there's hearing protection that go with mm -hmm. that or whatever else so um that's a huge missed opportunity a lot of times that you can that you can upsell or upsell through packaging uh or not packaging but um like packaging things together kind of yep. thing so you can Bundle. get like a 
a bundle. Yeah, exactly. That kind of mindset as well. Or a ma- in, in manufacturing, a lot of times it's a, it's a maintenance set. If you're an OEM and you have, you know, you have to change the hydraulics, blah, 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 and this, and you get everything to do it all at once and yeah, in a kit. Uh, and then a lot of, a lot of big mistakes I see is, uh, they forget to have a call to action at all. So they have yeah. lots of information, but there's no actual call to action, right? So, uh, if you want someone to call you or you want someone to take that action, whatever, make sure you're asking it. So every blog you write, every, uh, uh, you know, content page that you're writing about it, make sure that there's something that's pointing towards where you want them to go next kind of thing, you know? Um, and ask for the sale, right? Now don't be too salesy, but make sure you're asking for the sale at the same time. Yeah. So. Drop the mic. Damon, I, you know what? We might take a moment of silence right there for yeah. you. That, 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 so, Paul, it's been a while. We do our mic drops, but then when you really, when, then we do our moments of science where they really think about that, guys, out there. And, and Damon, I learned that from you years ago. I, and Paul, I'm not great at it, is how to not be too salesy is what you're saying. Great takeaway. However, man, have the courage to ask for the sale. I want your business. I want to earn your business. I deserve the opportunity. There's nobody better that's going to do this job than our company. So I love the balance of what you're saying. I'm going to put you on the spot and I don't know if you have access to it. I think you had a great tip or a great little before and after with Hayden. Was that a recent post? Do you have, do you have access? Like, would that be a quick thing that you could pull up? Yeah. uh, Hayden, we didn't do their site. So I wasn't ready to show that one but i could definitely show some before and afters and stuff yeah, Hayden, yeah. uh if anybody's interested uh even we just you, posted it on our social media uh, yeah so even if you have that quick video that you just posted didn't you just uh, post a video of Hayden? sure i'd love for you to show that because they've got i love their tagline <laughs> let's see if we can find it fast enough here so uh, while he while he's pulling that up, you know, great things to think about is on your website is you know speaking their language, yep. not your internal language. Yep. Right? How to have a nice you know modern design doesn't have to be you don't have to break the bank, but, but you know putting that investment, you know if you're if you're potentially close, you know if your client is a, a five figure six figure client, Damon, you know can we yeah, spend gotta a, look it got to spend a few dollars on the website, right? Yeah. I don't know if you'll hear the audio or not. Um, should we play this now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. We'll see the before. Oh. Yep, there's a before. Get strut done. Don't you love that? Yeah. The cards, the catalog, the yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, from a simple one page line yeah. card kind of thing, yeah. So, yeah. uh, that was one of my favorite uh taglines we ever wrote. Uh, yeah, get struck, struck done. done. How yeah. now, how, how, where'd you, how'd you come up with that one? I, I mean, to give so it was uh, a magical moment in a um, so we were just talking about doing like positioning and interviews and stuff like that. So, I'm in a positioning meeting with Hayden. And I'm asking them about, you know, their business and what, what, what's their differentiation. And some woman in the back, you know, she was one of the board members or something screams out, get shit. We just get shit done. you know. (laughs) And I'm like, that's your tagline. I literally heard it and was like, that's your tagline. You you spit it out like that. That's awesome. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, get strut done. And everybody's like, Oh (laughs) yeah. It's just like a moment. Did you do like, did you drop the pen and like just yeah. walk out of the room or like, yeah. how did you? <laughs> I should have, I should have pulled like a, what was that? Like a George Costanza where he just like leaves yeah. after he said yeah. something good. Yeah. You should have just, you should have just dropped and walked, get strut done and you should have just walked yeah. out. Yeah. That <laughs> out the room for good. That yeah. was awesome. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So, awesome. Paul, last thing I'd like to really, you've used this word multiple times in this great conversation today is educate. You know, just being that fierce educator as a manufacturer. And we talked about assume here. If you want to, if you're adamant about assuming something, let's assume that your customer knows nothing. Just assume that your customer knows nothing and just get as much information on a website as humanly possible. Paul, we'll start winding down any last uh, words of wisdom, parting thoughts that you want to share as far as like great takeaways for folks kind of getting their brand on fire, getting that juice back up. That's so much pressure on that question. Um, (laughs) I'm not sure, you know, ultimately uh, you, you know, 
if you don't have a good website these days, that's your storefront, right? Like that's, that's like basically like you don't even exist if it's not right. online or or if it's so outdated, right? So having that, and if you're investing in it, you're investing in some good money. So if you're doing it right the first time, it could last a while, but more importantly, it's going to get the results that you're looking to do. So, you know, I think ultimately a lot of companies, uh, it's like a painful thing for them to do and stuff like that. But if you're doing it right, it's going to be very effective and it could be a, lot, a fun process. So, you know, I encourage them to, to really think about doing it just the right way the first time instead of trying to hack it together. The amount of times that we've had to come in and, and redo something that they tried to do three times and failed, um, it's always, it's sad. And then they run out of budget because they <laughs> tried it right. to do it too many times. So, um, you know, try and do it right the first time and uh, and understand that buyer. Don't just don't just get suckered into pretty pictures and don't just get suckered into things like SEO, you know, understand the, the bigger picture of it kind of thing. Well, I absolutely love it. Paul, best place to find you. We've got you here on LinkedIn, aviatecreative.com. Any other thing, any other yeah, social? All social media were Aviate Creative, easy to find. Um, and uh, I, they could certainly uh, look me up as well. Um, not too many people with my last name. So um, look me up on the internet uh, and you'll find lots of information about us. But aviatecreative.com will get you to everywhere you need to go. Nice. Oh, awesome. awesome, Paul. All right, well, how about this? But it, Damon, I, I have one last question, but you know what, before we, how about everybody, if you've been hanging out with us for, man, we're at 50 minute mark, you know, it's a great time and you've been sitting down you can stand up and stretch. And how about giving Paul a huge round of applause for just dr multiple mic drops. We had a moment of silence, tons awesome. of gold here, go back and hit the replay button. But Damon, before we close out, we got to do, do it. I do have a question for Paul, and I'm pretty sure we didn't ask it. Paul, I think I have one more, but we've got a couple, a couple comments here. A couple David. comments. We got Fei Fei in here right now. Thanks for stopping by. Well done, Paul from Whitney. So much wonderful right. nuggets in this conversation. We had Harry it's stopping beautiful. by. Good strut, Paul. <laughs> Thank you. And Gary and, and, a good and one, Gary, Gary dropped by. So we had Harry and Gary stopping by. Harry uh, Gary says, thanks, guys. Hey, thanks David. everyone. But yes, I, everyone I got one more question, but you know what? I don't know if I can hang out with Harry. Does that make sense? I don't know. Yeah. Like, I can't hang out with the guy. Well, maybe it's the perfect combination. Well, yeah. we could be. We, right, right, could right. be. I'll, I'll be curly. So uh, anyway, Paul, I have one last question for you. And so this, a friend of mine wanted me to ask you this. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you sitting down for this one? Okay. You're a Jersey guy, New York guy. Are you Yankees or Mets? Yankees. Yankee. All right. Love you, brother. Okay, Yankees. Let's say the Yankees are playing the Red Sox. Just a pure hypothetical. Let's say the Yankees are playing the Red Sox. They're in the Bronx. It's bottom of the ninth. It's tie score. There's somebody on second. Judge. Aaron Judge is on second base. Or bottom of the ninth. Two That's outs. Not the big playing one. Playing the dreaded, hated Boston Red Sox. You, you with me? You're good? Yeah, but I got to warn you, I'm not much of a sports guy. So Okay, so all right. hang, <laughs> hang tight. Hang tight. Bottom of the night, two outs, guy on second, tie score. Like, we need the winning run, okay? Aaron Boone, the manager of the Yankees, looks down the bench, says, hey, Kishé, get up there, grab your bat, grab your helmet, hit in the winning run, okay? You storm out of the dugout, you grab your bat, you throw on the helmet. As you're walking to the plate to hit in that winning run, what's your walk-up song? Oh, God. <laughs> He's not prepared for this. What is your walk-up song? And you're in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium. What is your walk-up song to hit? Big choice game? right there. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> I so I was so at the. I gym. would say something from uh, Greta Van Fleet. That's who I've been. Greta here. Van Fleet. Oh, okay. good choice. To Greta Van Fleet. Yeah. So, all right, that's a great answer, Damon. I was at the gym this morning. You know what would be a good one? We're, you and I, we're old enough. Remember the monkeys? We all remember the monkeys, oh, yeah. right? I'm a believer. How about that? They there had Smash Mouth's version of I'm a believer. That would be a good walk up. So yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. All right. So, Paul, thank you for joining us today. Damon, a couple more comments coming in. We've got oh, yeah. Matthew dropped a comment. Matthew, thanks thank so much, you. Matthew. Yeah, thanks so much, Paul. Thank you. That was awesome. Diane, thank you. Sending walk you up to the win by <laughs> Diane. Thanks. Brendan, all you hey. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We appreciate you. We know how busy you are. We just we love it's an honor for Damon and I. We bring in just all stars of like Paul, yeah. just bringing in tons of value, lots of information. Connect with Paul on LinkedIn, go to his website, tons of great information. Get him on a call, have a conversation on how he can help you, 
your brand to win the day. Paul, I want to thank you, my friend. Thank you for your friendship, your support, everything you do for the manufacturing community. God bless you guys. Have a great weekend. Damon, close us out, will you please? All right. Well, thanks everyone for being here today. Thanks so much, Paul. Just so much wonderful information. And I, like Kurt said, if you did not hear this from the beginning, go back to the beginning, start over, listen to Paul. He's going to give you some good nuggets about getting your website set up and, and our discussion today around engineering your manufacturing website for your buyer. So much good stuff in there. want to thank everyone who dropped the comments in there today. want to thank everyone who was watching and didn't drop the comments in today. And Kurt and I are so happy because... We are going to be back again on Monday. We'll be Have back again on Monday. And so, Damon, like we always, uh, we'd love to say, just go out and be someone's inspiration, just like our dear friend, Paul. So thank you, guys. Yeah. We'll see you here on Monday. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Thanks, Kurt and Damon. Yeah.